KS Moto Kicks. It's about three or four months of consistent riding time in these shoots. This is the time to give you the full review. This was my one worry with these shoes. They've held up pretty well, especially considering that I have gnarly metal pins in my pedals. This is awesome. I genuinely love this addition to these shoes. A shoe company owned and operated by a real dude who really cares about making something that is good for its intended use. Last week I posted a couple videos about these shoes, the MKS Moto Kicks. I posted my unboxing and first impressions on the shoes themselves, as well as my first riding impressions, riding in them at the trails. Both of those videos were filmed in July. So I've been riding in these shoes ever since. It's about three or four months of consistent riding time in these shoes. And I figured this is the time to give you the full review. And I kind of like this approach to filming these videos and then releasing them kind of all at one time so that you get the first look at them when they're brand new, then the first ride on them, and then the following week you get a in-depth review based on actual use of the shoes. You can see I have been riding in these shoes. So I want to do this in kind of an order with some structure here talking about a couple different aspects of shoes in general and these shoes specifically. So first of all, let's talk about the aesthetics of these shoes. I genuinely think these shoes look good. And a couple people in the comments on my unboxing said, one was these look like a hybrid between Vans and either DVS or Duffs. And then the other person said these look like a hybrid between Etnies and Vans. And I looked at them and I was like, yeah, I wish I would have had you for the unboxing and first ride because that is perfect and it could have been like a title or something. So as far as aesthetics go, I think the shoes look good. They definitely don't look like out of place. They look like BMX action sports style shoes. And this, what is called the brace on these shoes, I don't think looks out of place at all. I don't think you would show up to the skate park and anyone is going to see you wearing these and be like, ooh, what are those? With kind of a gross look about it. So as far as appearance goes, pass for me. I think the aesthetics are good and the fact that they don't look bad or ugly or goofy in any way is a positive. And along the lines of the appearance of these shoes, we should talk about the materials and construction of the shoes before we get into the durability and how they actually held up. So when we're looking at these shoes, this piece right here, all of this appears to be some sort of like suede material. There is a difference between this inner area here and the rest of the shoe. So this suede material is very similar to shoes that you've had for sure. But then we get to the back. This piece right here is like plastic rubber. It is thick and not much more to say about it than that. I think it's a plastic rubber and then the back of the shoe is a different material yet. It's like a faux leather type material. And then we look at the insides. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the insole as well as the skid plate to look at the inside. So the inner, this material right here appears to be very similar to other shoes you probably have seen. And then on the very inside, maybe shoe experts could know what that is. It's pink and it's got a stiffness to it, even after riding. We'll get there, don't worry, we'll get there. The padding on the shoes, there is a ton of padding on the inside that goes around where your ankles sit. And 
Obviously we can't know what that padding is without ripping into the shoe. They do have the elastic pieces that you probably are used to seeing in order to keep the tongue in place. And ultimately, in terms of materials, I don't know how much there is to say because I feel like it kind of is what it is beyond what we're gonna talk about when it comes to durability. The shoelaces are a flat cloth lace, pretty much normal shoelace that you're probably used to seeing. And there is stitching throughout, so there's some sort of thread material that's stitched on these. When it comes to the skid plate, these are plastic. It is pretty much a plastic insert that goes in here that acts as a barrier between your foot and the shoe and then whatever's on the other side of that. And we have the memory foam. That is another construction material thing here. Memory foam, so it's foam padded. That is that. So in terms of material, it's another thing that is what it is and we can talk about the durability now. So when it comes to durability, we can see the shoe. We can see that this shoe has clearly been worn. I have worn these for going on four months and they have held up. The only things that I could point at here are the shoelace fraying, which could happen to anyone in any pair of shoes that don't have some sort of fancy laces that can't fray. And I have a feeling this was something to do with my metal pins on my pedals. I think it might have caught that and ripped one off and then it goes from there. But it hasn't fully ripped yet, so I've just kind of dealt with it. And you get a second set of laces in the box with these shoes. So if you do rip a set of laces or you want to change the color, boom, swap them out. Good to go. Now, the second thing that I could point out is that there is a little bit of a wear spot developing right here. And I would venture to say over the next two months, maybe month three, don't know, can't say for sure, that this is probably going to be a point of failure. And it's actually something that I spoke with Frenchie, the guy who runs MKS, directly about in some cool future stuff that could be in the works. We'll talk about that in a bit too, but that is something to point out. This is something I noticed. It's not in an area where you do foot jams, but I feel like there could be some tweaks made that would make this not happen as soon. The shift plate, that's what this piece is called here. Not something I ever used because I didn't ride dirt bikes or anything like that. So we'll skip over that to the sole. This was my one worry with these shoes. And we could take a look at the bottoms here on the soles and see that they've held up pretty well, especially considering that I have gnarly metal pins in my pedals. There were a lot of people who also thought, you know, these were going to just disintegrate quickly. And I genuinely thought that the little lines between the patterning here we're gonna come off because of my pedals. And I'm pleasantly surprised at how well they have held up to riding. You can see the sides this a little bit too, from no footers and taking feet off and putting them back on. They are a bit chewed up, but nothing has separated. Nothing is coming apart. I love this stitching on the soles for that, and they're still good. I would say once these broke in, they became a little less stiff than they initially were, but the bottom parts of the sole is definitely still stiffer than the front, which is, in my eyes, what I want. I want my heel to be protected, but having a little bit of pedal feel is nice. And when it comes to how these things have held up, I would say pretty dang good 
for my metal pedals where I'm doing no footers and taking my feet off constantly. I do a lot of tricks where I put my foot in the back tire for ice pick lawnmower stuff. I do a lot of tricks like that and these have held up really nicely over these past three, four months. So in terms of durability, I feel like these things are doing well. The other thing to talk about too is how this brace piece here has held up to my crank arms and my pedals and doing all kinds of no-footed tricks like that and just rubbing on the cranks constantly, being an impact point when coming back from anything with feet off. This is awesome. I genuinely love this addition to these shoes and there's even talks, we'll get into the future stuff here since we've talked about the this area here. I said and mentioned to Frenchie how cool it would be to see this piece here just cut down and cover all the way into the, the kind of inner foot area here on the shoe so that it protects anybody who does tail whips and things, protects that little bone that sticks out protects that inner part of your foot even more with this thick plastic that you're just not going to get through with a crank arm unless it's catastrophic. And we can take a look too at the other shoe on that toe area. It has not worn through at all. This shoe is definitely looking good and I think I could probably get, I'll find out if I can get another three however many months out of them. We're gonna find out. So, future stuff. There is a mid or high top version of these coming. I talked about it in the unboxing. So I'm gonna wear these MKS Moto Kicks, the MX model, until they are unsafe to be worn. And then Frenchie literally said, like wear these until you don't feel comfortable wearing them. Send them to me. I'll do an autopsy and I'll see where they kind of wore the most and we can talk about improvements there. I mentioned doing some sort of toe protection because these shoes don't have any kind of rigidity other than the, what the material itself offers in the top of the toe. So like for foot jams and things like that. So I mentioned something about that. I'm like, you just do something in there to make toe have some reinforcement for foot tricks and then while doing that extend that to where this wear is at and then you've solved two things in one so let's talk for just a quick second about these memory foam inserts that come with these shoes i was told by somebody that these were going to wear through super fast and after a month i wasn't even going to be able to use them well as you can see here these memory foam inserts, other than how this one's still a little crumpled up, which I'll talk about in a sec, are totally fine. I didn't wear through them at all. There's definitely some marks from my feet, but they've been totally fine. And honestly, the only thing I could say about them is that this one in my right foot, for whatever reason, would not stay put under my foot. It would slide to the front of my shoe. This one though, as you can see, perfectly fine. So the left side didn't move at all. Right side, for some reason, moved forward. So I feel like I can't draw a conclusion here because one was perfectly fine and one moved forward. Other than the quality on these has been fine. I like the comfort of them. I didn't wear these to walk miles in every week either. So that could be a contributing factor to why they didn't wear through. But for my use, just using these whenever I ride my bike and you know go out in public randomly, I don't have to walk a lot for what I do. They've been fine and they work. And the fact that you get these and normal inserts at the same time means if these did wear through, you can put the normal ones in and you get double that kind of longevity too. So yeah, memory foam inserts. On the skid plate, it's something that I feel I definitely noticed with riding. I feel like it kind of just takes whatever is here for the stiffness of the sole and adds to it a little bit. So it's just another option that comes with these shoes that you could add to it if you wanted to or not use it all if you didn't want to. So if you like 
having your soles a little bit more flimsy, then you still have that medium to stiff protection in the heel area, but the toes are definitely more malleable for that pedal feel, which I do like. But if you wanna up that, you put this in here and you go from that medium to kind of stiff back to having definitely stiff and then medium pedal feel on the front. Options. Options is awesome when you're spending $130 on shoes. You get a lot of stuff with these to make more options, to kind of customize them for you between the memory foam and the normal insert and the skid plate. There's a lot of different mix and match options to make these shoes right for your feet. So on that note, I'll just add that MKS Moto Kicks is a shoe company owned and operated by a real dude who really cares about making something that is good for its intended use. These shoes were made with riding around the pits at a motocross track on pit bikes and dirt bikes in mind. And the fact that they line up pretty well for BMX is a sweet bonus. And the fact that Frenchie is so open to changing things and making them even better for BMX is even better. So if you wanna support somebody who actively cares is just a real dude, and you're willing to see what these have to offer, I think the state they're currently in, they're worth a try. I'm not gonna say go buy them right now, but I'll say they're, they're worth a try. And in the future, if those changes and when those changes are implemented with that brace getting extended to the middle of the shoe and toe protection being reinforced, I will say these will definitely be awesome, awesome, awesome BMX shoes over the good BMX shoes that they already are. So with that, that's my final review on the MKS Moto Kicks. If there's any updates, I'll keep you guys posted. All the links you need are in the description down below. Thank you, Frenchie, for doing what you do, keeping it going, and being willing to send a dude you never heard of before a pair of shoes just to try them out and make a couple videos on them. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Goodbye.